This Holy Week cantata was inspired by The Last Week by Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan with musical pieces chosen and adapted by myself and Mary Boyd and brought to life by our Centennial United Church Choir, Jim B. Croft and Susan Snelling will be reading As we begin, let us center ourselves in prayer. O oh God, through Jesus, you seek to reveal yourself to us and show us your way. Help us to hear your word to us through this Holy Week cantata and inspire us to keep traveling with you and answering your call to be loving seek justice, and walk in your way. Amen. At the beginning of the week of Passover, the year Jesus was crucified, two processions entered Jerusalem from the west. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Idumea, Judea, and Samaria, entered Jerusalem at the head of a column of imperial cavalry and soldiers. Here, in pomp and ceremony, with war horses, foot soldiers, leather armor, helmets, weapons, banners, golden eagles mounted on poles, and sun glinting on metal and gold, accompanied by the beating drums and marching feet. The representative of the power and might of the Roman Empire entered the city. <clears throat> the crowd who gathered in awe and fear knew their place, subservient to the will of a king who would keep the peace through force and violence. From the east, another came, a Jewish peasant from Nazareth, riding on a donkey down the Mount of Olives, cheered by his followers. Here, in humility, and passion, with cloaks thrown on the ground before him and palm branches waving in the air, surrounded by shouts of Hosanna. Seated on anything but a war horse, the representative of the power and might of God's kingdom entered the city. The crowd who gathered here celebrated with joyous cheering this one who rides on to command peace through love and justice, who rides on with tears in his eyes, knowing God's kingdom must confront the other.
riding on to the temple, Jesus discovers that the long arm of the Roman Empire reaches deep and grasps the very heart of the city of Jerusalem. Here, worship and sacrifice continue on, oblivious to the oppression and injustice raging throughout the nation. Prayer and penitence are offered in lieu of seeking justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with God. The people's everyday injustices steal the dignity and worth of a nation. And the temple is treated as a safe house where they can go to be absorbed, absolved, sorry, where they can go to be absolved of their complicity with imperial power and domination. In this way, the house of prayer for all the nations has become a den of robbers. Jesus, knowing God is a God of justice and righteousness, plans a demonstration in the temple court for the next morning in the hopes that his words and actions will remind the people that worship without justice is not acceptable to God. It does not bear fruit.
the kingdom of God, Jesus was proclaiming, resisted and rejected the injustice, cruelty, and power over and above others that typified the Roman Empire. The kingdom of God was typified by another set of parameters altogether. The kingdom of God shows the face of justice to the poor. It opens eyes to see new possibilities and gives a voice to those who had forgotten how to sing. It renews the commitment of those following God's way of justice. And that made Jesus who preached this kingdom come very dangerous indeed. He was walking a path of peace straight into the mouth of the lion.
They would need strength for what lay ahead. And in an upper room, they found it. But leaving the warmth of the upper room to travel to Gethsemane, the shadow was gathered deep and cold. And only by trusting in God, any of us hope to find the strength to stay true to walk the way of the kingdom of God, even when it leads through certain pain and suffering. Jesus knew the path of peace upon which he tread could only lead to his arrest and persecution. And as the darkness deepens, he does not turn away. He kneels alone and prays to God, whom he believes can work in and through all things, to a God whose will is for the kingdom of justice and righteousness to be realized and whose will 
can be accomplished against all odds. A God whose will can never be broken. It is to this God, Jesus prays, not my will, but thine be done.
blessed be. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And he was willing to give his life as a demonstration to all that when you are participating in God's kingdom, there is no power greater than God's love. And in so doing, through his death, Jesus would prove to be a means of liberation for many, liberation to walk the way of the kingdom of God, Though the way is hard, it is the way of life. And Jesus is calling us to follow. Amen. 